what's going on guys um, so this is gonna be part two to the ant minor l3 plus plus setup video um, so let's go ahead and jump right in so you have your ant miner all powered up and ready to go and you want to start hashing so what's the next step uh, you want to figure out what uh, IP address your ant miner is pulling from the router itself so this IP up here um, so if you already know how to log into your router and, and check that, go for it. If you're not too sure how to do that, I would suggest um, downloading this, uh, this free tool. Um, it's called Angry IP Scanner. Um, and they have a version for Windows and for a Mac OS. So um, just go ahead and download that. And uh, when you open it up here, let me go ahead and close out of it and open it up again here for you. So when you open it up, this is what you'll see. Um, it's going to have your um, your IP address range of your your internal network here. Um, yours is going to look a little bit different than mine. That's okay. Um, it should autofill all these settings. One thing I suggest that you do do is uh, click on this little gear here to go to the preferences, and click on the display tab at the top there. By default, it's going to have this all scanned IPs checked. Um, just go ahead and check the alive hosts only. That way you only see um, devices that are pingable. Um, just hit OK and click Start. And it'll take a few seconds here. Um, doesn't take too terribly long. So you can see all the devices in my network. And um, so right here is the first ant miner and right here is the second one so um, so you just take this IP address and punch it into a web browser so you can see up here this is what I've done um, now when you do this on your machine um, you will get a uh, request for a username and password up here I already have that information saved um, the default username is root the default password is also root um, I would highly suggest that you change that um, to do that, you come to the administration tab. Once you get logged in, um, type in the current password and then just create a new password there. Just added security is always good. So, um, so once you get logged into your, uh, your AMP miner there, um, this is the initial page you'll see. Um, a couple of things to keep an eye out for. I would check the hardware version. When I got my AMP miner, it was kind of at the beginning of May. Um, I was actually running a firmware from, from April. And uh, so I highly suggest you check out uh, Bitmain's website. Um, it's actually, you can just go to like shop.bitmain.com. And if you jump over here to support, and down here at the bottom, you'll see uh, product firmware. And, uh, and then you just scroll down to whichever ant miner you have. For me, it's the ant miner L3. Click on firmware, and here's the firmware. So this was for 2018 um, in May 11th. So I went ahead and downloaded that firmware. And uh, there's actually a tab over here called upgrade. And you just download that to your desktop or whatever. Um, select file flash image just make sure you have the keep settings checked that's gonna keep all your hashing settings and all that fun stuff um, but yeah just check to make sure that you are running the, the latest firmware let's go ahead and jump over to minor configuration so um, this is where you're actually going to set up um, all the information for the the mining pools that you're gonna be mining from now you can also um, uh, do some solo mining. I wouldn't recommend it because the probability of finding a, a block with, with one of these ant miners is extremely low. Um, I would highly suggest just doing some pool mining. Um, and what I mean by that is so with pool mining you are um, working with other miners to, to find blocks so a bunch of other miners so you just share that profit with, with everybody else. Um, and I believe it's called uh, paper share and um, and yeah I would highly suggest just doing that so um, my favorite pool right now to use is uh, pro hashing so let's uh, 
let's take a look at that here. Um, we're gonna start out. Um, one one big tip that uh, I'd like to give you guys is any pool you're trying to mine from, they always have a help uh, tab up here at the top. So I would highly suggest looking for that, clicking on that, and they usually give you like three or four steps to uh, to set up your miner and uh, and to get hashing. So um, if we look at these steps here, um, you know, obviously create an account, and uh, there's some additional settings you can you can make in here. Um, you want to look for the URL and uh, port number that you want to point to. So in this in this case, if we go back over here, you can see that's prohashing.com right here. Same thing that they they pointed out in their instructions there. And uh, and then they say to use the same username as as you use to log into the website. So as you can see up here at the top, this is my username, and that's what I typed in as my worker uh, over here on, on our settings. Um, and then this um, I actually got um, just by looking at another example. But if we scroll down here, you can see that N just represents your worker name and, and nothing else really, just, just to kind of help me differentiate between my, my, my two miners here. And uh, so, and that's all you need to to start hashing from there. So let's go ahead and jump over to the uh, the settings here. So one thing uh, that's really cool about pro hashing is, uh, for one, they um, uh, allow you to mine the most profitable script coin. So I'm I'm mining on the script algorithm. Um, and they allow you to mine the most, whatever is most profitable um, at that time. So that's really cool. They also allow you to receive payout in your favorite coin. So in my case, I, you know, have 100% Litecoin, but say you liked um, a different coin. Say you really like, I don't know, say you really like Digibyte. So you can actually add that coin and say you want, you know, half in Litecoin, half in Digibyte. You can go for it. And then once you add that coin, you, you'll obviously get another payout address um, down here. Um, and you can, you know, point it to your to your wallet. So that's just my Litecoin wallet. Uh, you can actually attach your Coinbase account directly to, uh, to this site. So that's really cool. Um, change your password. Always enable two-factor authentication um, on anything you're deal dealing with, especially uh, with crypto. So always do that. Um, email notifications, um, all that fun stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and jump over here to earnings. So this is a pretty cool um, little tab they give you. So you can see my Yoda 1, Yoda 2. That's, uh, that's these guys here. So here's Yoda 1. Here's Yoda 2, and uh, you can see the uh, the current hash rate for each each miner, the mining efficiency, um, how much uh, unpaid balance I have currently with Litecoin. Um, this is all the uh, the payout uh, history here, um, account history of hash rate, uh, earnings by coin. It's definitely gone down. Uh, since the price of Litecoin uh, went down significantly. Um, these are all the blocks that I've found. You'll notice that the coins that it's mining. Um, so most of these coins, I mean, I've heard of some, but not all of them. And, uh, and you can see kind of a better visual of the, uh, the earnings there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they give you some really cool information. It's a really slick site. So I've... Uh, and I've had good luck, you know, with my hash rates on, on this site. So I would highly recommend it. Um, so let's look at the second one here. This is a Litecoin pool. So it's a little bit different. Um, you can only mine Litecoin. So if you, you know, want the availability to be paid out in other coins, then pro hashing is probably your best bet. But um, if you're a big uh, Litecoin fan, then Litecoin pool is, is just as good, I would say, as pro hashing. So as always here, I'll always look for that help up here at the top. So if you click on the help, um, this gives you just the four easy steps here to set everything up. 
Um, of course, create an account, all that fun stuff. So I am on the East Coast, and so that's where we got this, uh, this address from. My worker is my username dot one because this is my first um, first worker here or my first ant miner and then uh, my username dot two is my second one and uh, and they explain that down here the default passwords one obviously change that I've modified it a little bit here just for this video but um, but yeah I always use a secure password there um, then uh, so if we jump over here to my account You'll see I have you know halt.1, halt.2, and my password. Don't really have any history here because I haven't mined with this pool in a while. Um, there's a little bit of data. Uh, you can see I've mined a total of 0.8 Litecoin through Litecoin pool. One cool thing I wanted to talk about on um, Litecoin pool that I really like is so your payout address. So you can actually lock this. So if I click this lock button, it'll give me a warning saying, um, if you lock this, you can never change it on this account. So if somebody gained access to your account and tried to change the payout address, um, they couldn't do that. Uh, also, they uh, with, without even locking it, um, they actually will, if you change your address, um, you will not receive payouts for 24 hours. So that's really cool too if somebody you know, happen to get access to your account, then then they can't uh, you know change it to, to their address, which is really cool. Um, that's pretty much all there is here. Um, so of course, two-factor authentication. Always make sure you have that enabled. Um, so let's go go ahead and go over here. Um, we'll jump over here to advanced settings real quick uh, under minor configuration. This is where you set the frequency. So this is the default frequency of the L3++. Um, I believe the L3++ was 384. Um, so essentially when you buy the L3++, you are getting a warranty for an overclocked frequency. Um, because if you change, if I were to change this above 450, um, you know, to anything above it, I would void my warranty. So I'm letting my miners ride for you know several months before I do that, <clears throat> and uh, um, you know over time I might increase that a little bit, but uh, I kind of like where they are right now. So let's jump to the miner status page. So I'm not going to talk about every little thing on this page; just kind of kind of point out the most important things. Um, I'm not going to even pretend that I understand what all of this stuff means. I mean, that's kind of why I'm making th these videos so I can kind of learn as I go. I do understand a good majority of it, but I'm still learning. So um, anyways, this is your uptime. I've been playing around with these settings here, so that's why the uptime is so low. Um, this is your current hash rate. This is your overall average hash rate. Some things that you really want to pay attention to here, um, some of the more critical things, so these indicate your four hashing boards, and then these are obviously your chips per board, 72 chips per board, ASIC chips, um, the frequency. So you wanna look at the your temperatures when you get uh, the, the miner up and running. So uh, this is the, the temperature of the control board, and this is the temperature of the chip itself. So not too terrible, and these are in Celsius, so um, 50 to 60 degrees Celsius is uh, good temps. Um, and all these little O's over here, these represent um, all of your ASIC chips per, um, per board here. And what you don't want to see over here is an X. An X would mean that one of those chips failed. I've um, been luck lucky enough to never see an X, and I hope I never do. Uh, and then these are, of course, your fan speeds. One other thing I did want to mention, you want to definitely pay attention to, this HW, these mean hardware errors. So you don't want these to get, you know, above, you know, single digits or the hundreds. You know, if you start seeing it accumulate a lot, you're probably running too hot or you've overclocked and you're getting some, some errors. So just keep an eye out for those. Um, 
But yeah, I think that's I think that's the long and short of it. I think that should at least get you guys um, up and running and, and hashing with uh, with your ant miners. Um, the only other tab here, I believe, is just the network tab. Um, if you wanted to put a static IP <clears throat> on your your ant miner, there you can. And then these are just basic ping tests if you're having connectivity issues. Um, I think I also skipped over, um, yeah, like the monitor tab. So this is just your basic like Linux. Um, if you want to look at the processes there that that are running in the background, you, you can that's you can kind of see that under the monitor tab, and then the the logs of the uh, the ant miner itself. Um, but yeah, you can jump in and look at those, but. Yeah, anyways, I think uh I think I'll go ahead and end the video there. If uh if you guys found this informative, um I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up and uh um if you'd like to go ahead and subscribe to the channel for for more content like this. And uh thank you guys for watching and as always, I hope you guys stick around for the ride to the moon.